Hello hackers! Welcome to the next video in the Dynamic Allocator Misuse Module. We're going to be talking about the dangers of the heap. So um, you understand why conceptually uh, humans can make errors. I'm sure that you've observed humans making errors in the past. Not necessarily yourselves, but maybe someone uh, you know. Um, or maybe you've heard about uh, murmurs of humans sometimes making errors. Anyways, people misuse the heap. Um, why is this a problem? Well, this is a problem because uh, heap uh, implementations, dynamic allocation libraries, they go through this interesting cycle, right? Where any library has overhead. A function call has overhead. The call instruction has overhead, right? And, and, and everything that the allocator does will have some amount of overhead. And when an allocator exists, um, application developers, they will um, complain about this overhead. And, and that's a legitimate complaint. Application developers need things to be fast. Um, allocator developers will look at the state of the allocator and they will improve it. They will create a caching layer, some other optimization, etc. This invariably leads to security issues. A caching error might have uh, might introduce significant security problems. Um, you know, and, and 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 these can come in all sorts of um, um, shapes and sizes. Usually, it's in the context of a specific misuse of the heap. Security will uh, be compromised. Um, the allocated developers typically push back against security historically, and this makes sense to them. The allocator needs to be fast, and the allocator should be properly used. If the allocator is improperly used, if bugs in an application lead to um, the triggering of insecure states in the allocator, well, this is a problem with the application. The application had the bug. The application developer should fix their bugs, right? And so allocator developers typically are fairly resistant to high overhead security solutions. Right? They want speed. But invariably, problems build up. This view of security is secondary, causes issues. A lot of exploits start emerging. Uh, security of applications is compromised, even if the initial bug was the application's fault. You know, the fact that because of an optimization layer in the heap uh, uh, implementation, the original fault of uh, the original bug could be exploited um, becomes a problem and then the allocator developers create a fix and this fix will add security checks and security checks have overhead and this overhead will cause application developers to complain and the process starts new altogether right now in uh, pt malloc we are here um basically uh there were um security problems in the old implementation they led to security checks this among other things among other um um you know it, it, the emergence of, of heavily multi-core systems etc changed the um performance characteristics of the allocator and the developers created a caching layer um here which severely reduced the security of the heap implementation this is tcache and i'll talk about it in a uh, a later video um and right now with ubuntu 2004 with lipsy 2.31 and onwards we are starting to fix the problems that tcache introduced um last time i taught this course um so this video is recorded in 2020 of course um, in 2019, we were still on Ubuntu 18.04 as the latest kind of long-term support. I t use the latest long-term support of Ubuntu as a baseline for the course, of course. Um, and uh, 18.04 still had still had us here, so it was uh, actually just a little bit easier to pull off some of the of the hacks that we'll be talking about. Uh, but not all. It's it's a very small impact on how deep we go. If we went much deeper, then it would be an impact. All right. 
Um, so how can the, the heap be misused, right? I, I, I've kind of laid out this uh, life cycle of allocator security, um, and, but it all rests on humans making errors in applications, right? Because the, the applications are what an attacker attacks, not the heap itself. They get to the heap through the application. Um, and uh, we have kind of uh, three main categories of uh, heap misuse. Um, the first one is just forgetting to free memory. Right, we're gonna cover this super quick, um, but and then move on. But this leads to resource and uh, exhaustion. The second one is forgetting that we have freed memory, which is a very interesting uh, problem that can lead to using memory that is free, that leads to other problems later, as we'll discuss, and freeing memory that is free, which leads to other problems <laughs> later. Um, and there is um, a uh, danger of cor accidentally corrupting metadata that the allocator itself uses to keep track of heap state, right? So you can imagine a buffer overflow on the stack. You start clobbering control data, such as the return address. It's very similar for the heap. If you have a buffer overflow on the heap, you can start clobbering heap metadata and the heap goes insane. All right, um, let's touch on each one uh, piece by piece. First, memory leaks. Um, this is, and you've, you've all probably seen this if you have used um, the heap in any way. Um, if you malloc something and you forget to free it before you lose all uh, references to it, before you lose the, uh, the pointers um, in question, like here, uh, the pointer is a local variable and it's gone. <laughs> it was not freed. Um, what happens to the memory pointed by blah? Right. Of course, the memory stays around. It stays there in the data segment, waiting and waiting to be freed, and it is never freed until the process dies. Why is this an issue? Well, it could be an issue um, because uh, it, it, it could become an issue if that data is sensitive, right? So you might um, have some a sensitive password in there or something that you can no longer scrub from memory. Um, and other bugs could expose it. That's one problem. Uh, another problem is that you can exhaust your resources. Usually this isn't a security issue, but it can be. Um, let me show you an interesting thing. Um, I wrote up a quick program that just allocates huge chunks of memory while it's successful. So when a returns zero while a returns a pointer we keep doing this eventually we're gonna run out of memory that we can allocate malloc if you look at the man page can actually fail um on error these functions return null so malloc can return null let's compile it oops you know, back in the day, this would simply destroy my C code. Yeah. I'm glad that they added a check for that. All right. If you run this, after 32,767, uh, which is very uh, suspiciously uh, close to uh, 2 to the 16th, uh, allocations, our next allocation fails and we just get a uh, null that's returned. This might not be bad, uh, depending on, on, on what's going on with the program. If you check, obviously if here, if we check the return value of malloc, like we're implicitly doing in this while loop, that's fine. But if a program doesn't check it, then all sorts of weird stuff can happen. Usually it'll uh, be uh, access to you know, memory at zero or something, right? If I did, then did a, um, whatever, stir copied something into a, um, it would just uh, set fault on a null pointer dereference. Um, but there could be other um, uses of a, or of, a, of a, the return of malloc uh, that could be security critical. Or if this happens in the kernel, for example, the whole kernel could die. Um, so it's not a big security issue. You're not gonna actually bother with it other than this slide, but it is something to think about. Even just forgetting to free uh, an allocation can have some impact.
um, to the program. All right, um, let's go on to uh, real stuff, right? Use after freeze. Remember, similar, analogous to um, deallocation on the stack, not actually wiping out um, the, the, the data there, you know, conceptually similar to that. When you call free on a pointer, if you malloc something like this, and then you free it, that pointer is still there. This still points at the old piece of memory. Why is this bad? This is bad because if you forget that you freed it, and this happens, obviously in this small example, it, you know, this is a little contrived, but in a large application, this happens depressingly frequently. If you forget that you freed something and you uh, then use it, this is still valid memory. The problem is this memory, the moment it's freed, the allocator could reuse it for something else. In this example, when we free our user input and we allocate a variable that tells us if we're authenticated or not, when we then scan F here, we are um, overwriting our authenticated variable. We're writing exactly into there. All right, let's, uh, let me show you this in an example. Here's our use after free on the heap. Um, the exactly the what what you saw on the previous slide. All right, we compile that. So again, actually, let's let's first compile it without the use after free. Let's say we did not free the heap uh, the the user input variable here. We compile it. We run this heap UAF, name Jan, it says hello Jan, password, um, I don't know what the password is, it doesn't do anything, let's get the, the password, of course you know how to reverse engineer for a password, Jan, password, uh, boom. All right, so this makes sense, right? Also, obviously, if you're paying attention, if I run this as root and I put in a random password, boom, um, it works. Okay, anyways, let's restore this free. Compile it, run it as just a user, name Jan, password, something random or not uh, the correct password and it still works. Why, excuse me, why does it still work? It works because if we um, print out uh, the address of the user input and we print out the address of authenticated and we compile and we run. So user input is at this 2B22A0, authenticated is at the same location because we freed the user input here. The heap thinks it's no longer used. This um, pointer hasn't changed. But now when we, uh, uh, do this, we are now overriding the memory that authenticated points to the authenticated pointer rather than the user. What, what we are thinking of is the user input buffer. That buffer no longer exists. Cool. All right. So this is use after free, um, here, oops, that is the C book. Hold on, technical issues, one second. All right, let's, um, so so there we saw an overwrite of a, of a different um, variable. Use after free can have 
many, many brutal consequences. The bottom line in Utah After Free is you have something that is basically overlapping memory with two meanings. Um, and uh, that's bad news. I'll revisit that in a sec. All right, another danger, uh, memory disclosure. What if instead of writing um, to user input, we had read from it, right? Um, the simple um, simple case, the, the case that, that makes sense, you can imagine that instead of storing an authenticated variable, the program stored a password there, right? And then we could read out that password with a printf. Um, but a complicated case is that some heap implementations, including uh, PT malloc, which is predominantly what, which is what we'll be using um, in uh, the the homework and so forth, reuse the memory space of those freed chunks to store metadata about the chunks themselves. We'll talk about this in depth later, but for now, consider this um, program where we free the name buffer and then we print something in the name buffer. All right, let's take a look. Or sorry, we print out the name buffer, right? This, of course, in a small program is, is kind of uh, contrived, but it does happen in real life a lot. All right, let's take a quick look. Um, here is our heap disclosure. I'll say hello, our name, it'll ask us for our password. Honestly, we we're doing this to um, warm up the, to set up the, the, the heap. Then it'll ask us for our name um, and then it will um, print goodbye our name after freeing our name. Okay, so run it, password, name, so it says, hello, Jan, and then it frees. It does this free name and then says goodbye and what should be Jan, but it's not Jan anymore. It's some crazy stuff. Let's um, pipe it through a, a copy it. Uh, now let's just pipe it through hex dump. Uh, put the password, the name, all right. So it had told me password, and then of course I, I put in the password and it asked me for the name. It says, hello, Jan, and here it says goodbye, and then some stuff, right? And what is this stuff uh, up to the exclamation point? Exclamation point in ASCII is hex 21. So before that, it had 07, 75, 02, uh, A0, All right, hold on, let me rerun that. I think we got unlucky with a null byte. There we go. All right, we had gotten unlucky with a null byte. Of course, printf stops at a null byte. Um, so it says goodbye, and then here, 55717C8CF2, uh, A0. This looks like a heap address, right? Let's run. Um, this heap disclosure through a hex dump in a different thing. Let's cut out its mappings. The heap is at 557B20, uh, sorry, 557B230B8000. Password name. 557B23OB, five, five, and then of course it's partially some address in the heap, 82A0. All right, so with a, um, uh, by using something after it's freed, we can uh, disclose memory, disclose metadata that the heap uses, um, or other, if, if it has now been allocated again and is being used, disclose information um, other uh, data used by the program um, and uh, um, sorry I'm uh, having a brain dump one second okay um, and uh, 
you know, from there, uh, gain knowledge about the program. You know from memory errors and ROP and so forth how useful knowing a pointer can be. All right, the ultimate danger of the heap, metadata corruption. We just read out that metadata, right? What if we wrote over that metadata, right? This causes the allocator to go insane, right? The allocator trusts its metadata. Um, and it is very reluctant not to trust this metadata because that causes um, costly workarounds to be developed, right? This is one of the big security um, versus performance arguments is how trustworthy is this metadata? Turns out it's not trustworthy at all. And, and, and we've known this for two decades now. Back in the year 2000, um, uh, Solar Designer, you have seen Solar Designer in the module on return-oriented programming. Uh, Solar Designer created um, or proposed or at least published on the original uh, return to libc technique. Um, turns out Solar Designer also uh, uh, developed one of the early heap metadata corruption exploits. Created in 2000, uh, in, by 2001, this was formalized in hacker literature. Um, uh, specifically, you can see these two uh, frack articles. You know, very, very long time ago, people were corrupting metadata and doing crazy stuff uh, or forcing the allocator to do crazy stuff. This is now a whole genre in the hacking scene. Why is it a genre? In part, because uh, people went a little crazy with it. Um, a hacker by the name of Phantasmal Phantasmagoria developed a lore around heap metadata corruption. And this mailing list in 2005, five years after the invention of heap metadata corruption attacks, or at least the first uh, discussion of them, um, Phantasmal Phantasmagoria described a bunch of these techniques and named them. It was these insane names that, that, that people are, um, uh, you know... It, it, it's not clear why these names were chosen, but people really uh, jumped on them. Um, there's, you know, the House of Prime, the House of Mind, the House of Force, etc. Many of these um, stayed around until very recently. The House of Force was valid as of the last time I taught this class. In Ubuntu 18.04, you can still uh, do House of Force, but now it is unfortunately behind us. Um, the House of Spirit is still doable, which is incredible, right? Um, and we'll, we'll learn about it a couple of videos from now. Um, and then things got out of hand quick. So, uh, people have, have started, um, adding more and more houses, um, as they discover additional techniques to mess with the heap. Um, a recent trend has gotten to making house of, and then your handle. Um, so there's house of orange, house of bot cake, et cetera. Um, these are, uh, a, uh, perpetual study of heap vulnerability and you can actually see these uh, houses explored in um, a in a repository from um, hacking team shellfish uh, my uh, uh, the hacking team with whom I competed at DEFCON for 10 years um, they maintain a list of a whole lot of different libc attacks uh, for example house of spirit and you can click through and you can see how it works for different versions of libc they have a, a c programs that actually um or house of bot cake that demonstrate the attack against themselves pretty pretty slick stuff um by the way if you're running a hacking club i highly recommend doing something like this um when we created house of uh house of when we created how to heap um, with shellfish, this is how we learned the heap by creating this repository. It was incredible. Um, all right. Anyways, um, a lot of the, the the various techniques here, many of them, not all, and many of the um, the different you know strategies toward abusing uh for security reasons a heap bug in a program um has to do with trying to trick the allocator into returning overlapping allocations um 
or into returning overlapping memory, basically. Um, if you have in your program two pointers that point to the same memory, but one of those pointers is treated as a security critical thing, like uh, an authentication variable, as we saw in an example, or a function pointer, or some other program metadata, etc. And the other one is not treated as security critical, for example, allowing user input to be written directly to it by the normal operation of the program, then it's game over. Your program has been compromised. The, the, um, this can be a direct compromise if your security critical uh, view of that memory you, th you think is dedicated to holding some state, um, uh, state uh, uh, structure that has function pointers in it, and you follow those function pointers, you call directly to those function pointers, and then through a different view into the same memory, because of an overlapping allocation, because of a heap misuse, you can override those pointers. Obviously, you can redirect control flow. Um, oftentimes, there is metadata such as the length of some other structure, for example, that you can overwrite. And then this causes other, sometimes more traditional vulnerabilities, such as you know overflows on the stack, for example. Um, oftentimes, there's just straight up sensitive data that is um, on the uh, living in the heap that um, you can get an overlap and read it out. Um, in general, what you will see and do with um, the challenge problems for this module is trying to do really crazy stuff to get overlapping allocations and then abuse that to get the flag. And now we will dive deeper into the crazy stuff you'll be doing.